Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is going to be a, a Give Me 10 thread, something I haven't done in quite some time. Uh, but just sitting here tonight watching TV and a song came up in a show that I was watching and it made me kind of think about this. And next thing you know, I'm making a list in my head. Next thing you know, I'm pulling out records. And I just thought I would just you know kind of shoot a quick video here really quick. And so I'm sure at some point this this has probably already been done and I just missed it. But, um, but yeah, I just thought it kind of be fun to do. So what it is, and of course, you know, feel free to put comments down below if you want to kind of give your 10 or if you want to make a video, feel free. But it's, you know, it's not a contest or anything like that. It's just talking music here. Um, but what I the question I asked myself after seeing this was, what are 10 songs where you discovered that song for the, and heard him for the first time by watching a TV show or a movie. Okay, that was the first time you heard these songs and they were instant gotta haves. You know, I'm totally obsessed. I'm probably, you know, looking at the, the, the uh, TV at the end of the movie trying to read the credits to find out who that was because I want to go buy it tomorrow. Um, so that, that, that's kind of the 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 gist of the give me 10 10 songs that you first heard about first heard for the first time in a movie or tv show that you immediately fell in love with now the other key to that or at least that i put on myself was they had to be songs that were already on studio albums by that artist so not anything that was made for kind of strictly for the movie so to speak you know um and one of the reasons I say that is because, you know, I, I'm a huge 80s fan. I mean, and most of you guys kind of know that. And one thing that I love, love, love is 80s soundtracks. I mean, whether you're talking about, you know, Teen Wolf, some kind of wonderful, better off dead, um, just one, or one of the guys. I mean, just you, I can go on and on and on about the, my 80s love there. Uh, Return of Living Dead 2. But one of the things about a lot of the songs on there like a perfect example is a guy by the name of Jude Cole which most people probably probably don't know him I, I would guess but if I were making a list of my top 25 just 80s singles from soundtracks Jude Cole by himself would probably own two or three of those spots which is saying a lot <laughs> to have one artist own that many spots I mean he, he did you know, title track to Back to School, the title track to Heavenly Kid, just all kinds of stuff that I think are just fantastic. I have yet to purchase a single studio or even listen to a single studio album by him where it had anything on it that I liked. Uh, but when it came to him doing those soundtracks, he was like one of the men, if you will, <laughs> when putting together soundtracks for 80s movies. So I couldn't pick any Jewel Cole stuff. So it had to be something that Heard for the first time in the movie, fell in love with it, and then there was a studio album for me to go find the next day because I liked it so much when I heard about it in the movie for the first time. Got it? Okay. So now all those parameters are laid out. And of course, I do have a couple honorable mentions here, you know, because I couldn't nail it right down to 10. So I actually have, I think, 12 or 13 here, but this is still a give me 10 thread. We'll consider the first three honorable mentions. And actually, the, the first one here is kind of an honorable mention. Uh, Jackson Brown, the song I wanted to point out here was Somebody's Baby. Of course, this is the greatest hits, but it was on one of his studio albums. I just don't have it because I purged it. It wasn't in perfect condition, so I got to get a new copy of that. But um, yeah, Somebody's Baby, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I'm sure that's where a lot of people probably heard that for the first time. Um, but yeah, I, I so fell in love with that song the first time I heard the movie, and that was actually... I wasn't saying my first introduction to Jackson Brownie, but I, I think Tender is the Night was the first song I've really heard by him. And then Somebody's Baby was the song that really drew me into him. So had to put that in as kind of an honorable mention. Uh, yeah, and, and cause I was, was going to say this, the next one was an honorable mention, but I'll just kind of skip over and just show them all. It doesn't make a difference. Um, so... Flesh for Lulu, and first time I ever heard this song was, of course, off of the soundtrack of Some Kind of Wonderful, which was the song I Go Crazy, 
which of course just me fit that song so well that that was one of the songs that just uh, so pulled me into falling in love with that movie. So that's definitely one that was I discovered through through a movie. Uh, Dry the Rain by the Beta Band off the 3 EP album. I had never even heard of it. Oh. I was going to say, I've never even heard it of the beta band the first time I saw the movie High Fidelity. I, I just weren't familiar with him at all. So when I heard Dry the Rain on that scene where he, you know, I will now sell whatever he said, 10, 10, 10, 10 3 EPs by the beta band and, uh, you know, play that, that little piece in Dry the Rain. I had never heard that before and I was just floored when I first heard it. And um, I'll never forget that too because the girl I was dating at the time you know, she had seen it a few times and I had never seen High Fidelity. And she was like, God, you collect vinyl? You're a huge music fan and you've never seen? I was like, no, I've never heard of this movie. And gosh, of course, fell in love with the entire movie that day, much less just even that song. Terry Reed, Seed of Memory. This was a fantastic one. I think this was from, um, was it The Devil's Rejects? Uh, don't quote me on exactly which one. One of Rob Zombie's movies, I think it was The Devil's Rejects. But there's just kind of a scene where they're just kind of driving along. It's not like action going on or anything. It's almost like a dead time scene. And the song Seed of Memory is playing in the background. And I just thought, man, that is good stuff. <laughs> and sure enough, I went out looking and I discovered who it was. But this album was still really, really hard to find. I think I ended up finding this awesome copy in, I think, Washington, D.C. I was looking at a store out there for like $6. But, uh, yeah, if, if you're not familiar with that song, make sure you check it out. Seed of Memory by Terry Reed. It, it's like, um, it's almost like the, I don't know, the Almond Brothers and, and, um, and like Leonard Skinner kind of coming together with the, ballad, I don't know, it's hard to listen to it, you'll get a feel for what I'm talking about it's a fantastic song the next one here and this is actually what made me think about this tonight, I was watching the show Divorce um, and at the end, the song uh, Magnet and Steel was playing off of this album and it made me think about this, I was like gosh, I've heard that song in a number of different movies and TV shows and the first time I ever heard it was in the, the, the movie uh, Deuce Bigelow, male, male gigolo. Um, and I remember hearing it in that. I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. It just had this 70s kind of soft rock feel, but it also had kind of this 60s mellow beat type of thing to it. And So again, um, Magnet and Steel, very, very cool song. General Public, the song Tenderness. And this was a tough one too because... Weird Science is one of my favorite top three 80s movies of all time. And this song was in there. Just kind of in the background when Gary's dropping off his date and they're talking and everything. And so even though I'd seen it, you know, when I was younger, again, unlike you spoiled kids today, <laughs> you know, if we heard something or wanted to discover who sang something, you didn't have an internet to go to. You didn't have smartphone and blah, blah, blah. It was just kind of like... Your buddy either knew it, or you waited to hear it on the radio, or you had to find out from somebody at school, or you, or you know, you'd call in to the radio station and actually describe, "Hey, could you play that one song that has the blah blah? It says something about this. Do you know what that song is? Uh, we'll see if we can find it. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about it. And like, that's how you discover things. So for the longest time, I could hear the song in the background. I heard, I got the feel of it, but I couldn't fully understand the lyrics. And but I loved it and wanted it so bad. And of course, a little bit later down the line, discovered it was General Public. So, uh, Weird Science and Tenderness by General Public. Exact same thing with this one here. Uh, Duke Ellington and John Coltrane, the song In a Sentimental Mood, watching the Cosby Show. And you know, they did such a great job of incorporating a lot of you know jazz and just black culture and stuff like that into the Cosby Show without putting, you know, black culture in your face, because quite frankly, I don't like that. I can't stand that. You know, it's like, just let greatness talk for itself. And great things will go to the top. Crappy things will sink. I don't care if it's white, black, or whatever else. Good stuff will come to the top. 
And when you're dealing with stuff like John Coltrane and Duke Ellington, good stuff will come to the top. And sure enough, that, that that's one of the, the songs that he played when he was, you know, doing his romantic thing with Claire and everything. And I just remember listening to that just thinking, I don't even know what the heck jazz is or what it's about, but that feels good, <laughs> whatever it is. And for the longest time, I just didn't know what it was. But I would go back and watch that scene in the Cosby show because, you know, we didn't DVR. We actually recorded stuff on VHS tapes. <laughs> And I would go back and watch that scene all the time because I love that song. So, uh, In a Sentimental Mood from The Cosby Show. The Eagles. And the song is In the City. And the first time I ever heard that song was when I saw the movie The Warriors. Warriors. Come out to play. Yay. Awesome movie. Awesome soundtrack. And yeah, in the city at the very end where they're standing on the beach and they said the song's just kind of playing. And, you know, I knew of, you know, Hotel California and just like some of those main, main, mainstay Eagles hits. But I didn't know the Eagles. Matter of fact, I probably honestly didn't know much past Hotel California. So even then, I didn't know that was the Eagles singing that song. I just thought that is a freaking awesome song. So, uh. Yeah, the movie The Warriors is where I first discovered that. Adrenaline. This is Road of the Gypsy. And it's the title track that I'm talking about here, Road of the Gypsy. Which was one of the main tracks in the movie Iron Eagle. If you guys remember that. Um, but that was one of our, my brothers and I, one of our favorite movies. We used to watch it over and over all the time. And I love that song, Road of the Gypsies. And um, yeah, that's where I heard it for the first time. That's also, with that movie, that's the first time I'd ever heard uh, One Vision by Queen, because it was in that movie. I'd, I'd never heard that before. And there's actually a couple things with, with Iron Eagle. That was a really good soundtrack. Because remember, when you're talking about that, those of you that have watched my videos enough here, when you're talking about that early to, to mid-80s, that was when I, I first, first, first came to rock music and pop music and new wave and all of that. So everything was so new so fast. As I'm watching all these movies, there's just so much music that was coming that I you know, had just never heard before. Uh, here's another really good one, too, off of The Cars. And it's the song Moving in Stereo. And, of course, I heard that for the first time and thought it was the coolest thing in the world uh, off of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. You know, when she's getting out of the pool and she takes off her top and it's just like, even as hot as she was, it was just like, I don't care what's that song that's freaking playing in the background. You know, she, she can sit off to the side for a minute. I need to find out what that song is. Um, and it was moving in stereo. And, you know, at, at that point in time, I knew about the cars, but I was really just kind of mostly locked into the heartbeat city. You know, so most of what I knew was, you know, you might think and drive and magic. Um, you know, I'd, I'd heard of songs like... Um, you know, shake it up because that was in every freaking 80s movie ever made, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, moving in stereo, I had no idea that was the cars. So I discovered that the first time I watched Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which again, overall was a great, great freaking soundtrack. And the last two here, one by White Buffalo, and this, and this is the song Damned. I discovered this song watching Sons of Anarchy actually and it was definitely one of those just kind of ear dropping things because it was just this scene where they got into this fight at this bar and they finally you know, they leave or whatever and the next scene is just the two of the two of them talking to uh, Opie and Jax sitting in the clubhouse just talking in the bar and just faintly in the background I hear this song playing and I can't quite make out what it is but I just like God, I can really hear it. something sounds good there and and I kept trying to rewind it and see if I could maybe at least get a lyric so I can, you know, go. And then I said, okay, well, let me wait to the end of the show and I can go back and look and see if they, and there was no credits at the end for it. So I was just like, God, would you two just shut up so I can hear this song? So finally, what, what occurred to me was when you have a 5.1 surround sound system, center channel is where you get most of your dialogue from. The other ones are more of the creating the surround, the background noise and all of that. So what I did was I unplugged my center channel and turned the volume way up. 
it took away almost all of the dialogue. So now all I heard was the music and the noise in the background of the club. And I could kind of make it out. And I think I posted a quick like 30 second video here on YouTube just saying, could somebody tell me what this is? And sure enough, a VC member was like, the white buffalo. So uh, not only did I, did I discover that one through a movie, I, I put in a little work to figure out who the heck it was. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the, again, The Damned, really, really good stuff. Just kind of, a, I've always described this, so just imagine like Zach Wilde sitting down with an acoustic guitar and just doing kind of a, um, a kind of a powerful, heartfelt, almost kind of ballad, but Jack Wilde style. You know, that's that's what you give a white buffalo. So last but not least, Mazzy Star. And this is a So Tonight That I May See, or I Might Might See. And it's the song Fade Into Me, which arguably could be one of the best songs I've ever discovered in it in a movie. I had never, ever, ever heard of this. And and this is actually fairly recently too. And this album's been out since I don't know when. Um like nine ninety three or something like that. I mean it's 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 been out a long, long time. I had never heard of it. But just not too long ago, I was watching this movie, kind of this low-budget, straight-to-DVD kind of movie called uh, Swept Away. And it was about this, you know, rich lady and this servant that get stranded on a beach. They were on this big yacht or whatever. And then there's this moment in the movie where they kind of, while they're stranded, they fall for each other. And the, minute, and the second they do, while they're going through and showing them getting closer, they start playing the song Fade Into You. And I remember listening to that and just thinking, like, between that scene and that movie, it's like that was just the perfect combination to get across the the emotions and feeling and, and what they were trying to show you were developing between those two characters, especially for a lower budget movie, they could not have done it any better. And and I, I just I remember rewinding that over and over, just listening to that song and watching that sings. I thought it was so freaking awesome. And sure enough, you know, I was up a few minutes later trying to find a copy of this. So, uh, yeah, th this, this was, you know, a great, great find. So anyway, there's my give me 10, <laughs> 13. But, um, yeah, again, just kind of a quick idea that I had, wanted to share that. And so if you guys, again, if you want to kind of, you know, put some comments down below, let me know some of the, the uh, songs that fall under that same discovery method for you. That would be cool. All right, take care, VC. We'll talk to you guys later.